On today's video, I'll be weaving for the very first time on my new peg loom. So I'll be using what's called um, jute string. It's almost like a, a very small twine. Um, but first, I have to finish sanding all of my pegs that I'm going to use so that there's no rough edges. And then I cut my jute string into um, my chosen length. And uh, then I will be threading it through each one of the holes in the pegs. And then I'll make it um, so that it's exactly half. And I'll insert the pegs into their holes. I'm so excited that this project is finally to the point that I can begin to weave. I've been very nervous about it. I've been watching lots of YouTube videos and reading lots of things about it. And I'm super excited to get started. But I know this is going to be a long journey to get the kind of quality of product that I'm really wanting. It's taken me two years, you guys, to get to this point. I've been dreaming of this moment for, for a long time. I did not, however, know that I would be using a peg loom. Um, but a lady that I know uh, that lives not too far from me, just about 45 minutes, she makes gorgeous, beautiful rugs. And... Um, she said that that's what she uses is a peg loom and so I thought you know what it's a really great idea because I don't have a lot of space in my home or area that I can um, put up a huge weaving loom so a peg loom is very easily stored under a bed or in a closet behind a door um, so it's very space saving and accommodating that way so after I've measured out and thread all the jute string through each peg, I then have to pull it down straight and tie a knot in the end of each one. And I go up about two, maybe three inches. And it doesn't have to be exact on each one, but, but fairly close. Now, um... Please bear with me as this is my very first time of actual weaving. So I am following directions and um, instructions that I have seen and heard from other people and watched on YouTube and whatnot. And I'm kind of just um, winging it from there. I made this homemade peg loom so that it would have three different options for sizes and um, it would make it a really versatile so I didn't have to continue to make a, a new loom for this or that. I opted on this one to go smaller rather than larger since it is my first um, rug that I'll be weaving. So I thought, you know, this one I'm going to do all the experimenting on. So then you lift up the string that has the knots in it and put it over <clears throat> the other side of the loom. So as you're weaving, um, your finished product goes away from you, not towards you. So um, the starting end piece that I'm putting in first. I don't weave that around the pegs. I will be putting that um, as a woven um, object through the, the warp string itself to start with. And that will create what will eventually be the one end of the rug. So I um, did some carding and um, 
got some wool going. This first wool that I'm using is from my little Coradale. Um, I started by going over the first string, no, under the first string and then over the next two and then under one and over two so that I would get um, in the middle one string from each peg and that will bring those pieces together better. So you do that all the way through. This was quite a learning experience for me. Now what you see me doing right there um, by uh, pulling it up close to the pegs, that was a good thing to do. And um, once I get to the end of this row, that's the only piece I'll be doing that with until the other end comes along. And um, that was the right thing to do. But in a minute, you'll see that I second guess myself and push that all the way down the strings. And that was a mistake. I didn't need to do that. And actually, I shouldn't have done that. Um, but again, this is my very first time. I'm learning. And um, I'm grateful to be learning and to get to experiment. It's very easy to hook the two pieces of wool together because they have those little fibers and um, if you look through a microscope at wool you'll see like little prongs or little barbs on them and that's why wool will stick together and so you just have to kind of set the ends together and kind of scrubby it around there a little bit and it will stick. So I take this really cool comb I've got. I just love it. This is the right thing to do, and I should have done that and left it like that. But I second guess myself, and I think, oh no, I have to slide it down. Um, which is wrong. I should not have done that. So take that lesson from me and just leave yours right up there. And you'll see how this works in a minute but it took me doing it a few times before I figured it out see right there I'm I'm second guessing myself when I shouldn't have okay so now I begin the weaving I um, take my uh, roving that I've just made and I begin to weave it in and out of each peg. At first, I didn't really pull it very tight. I left it very loose. And as I continue with the project, I realized I need to pull those tighter. And again, it's very simple to add on the next piece um, to attach it and continue weaving in and out on each peg. When you get to the end, you just simply wrap it around and go back the other way. And make sure you um, hit every peg. You'll, you'll notice if you have missed a peg um, in your weaving, you'll be able to see it. And then you can go back around like this. I have to tell you, my tummy was just tickling today as I um, actually began to weave on my new peg loom. I just had such a good feeling. This is such a dream come true. And ever since I started my sheep, that was the whole reason I started them, because I want to make beautiful rugs. 
and um, and eventually sell them when I when I get good enough at it. Um, and I wanted to raise my own wool, and and that's what what we're doing. And I could just see that this dream is coming full circle. It's been a lot, a lot, a lot of work to get to this point. And for quite a while, um, I have put off the weaving because I have not had the money to purchase a loom. And I didn't know about peg looms until, you know, a little bit more recently. And uh, I finally just decided a few weeks ago, I'm not waiting anymore. I, I have all this wool outside. I want to do this. So I s just made up my mind that I was going to figure out how to make my own. And so I started watching YouTube again. What an amazing tool and resource YouTube has turned out to be for everyone. It's like the University of YouTube. You can learn to do anything. Just because other people are willing to share what they know, I just think that is so amazing. So yes, my little chocolate Coradale. Um, this is her wool that I'm using first. Uh, she has a very beautiful wool. For a long time, I thought hers would be a really hard to deal with wool. But out of all the wool I've gotten from everyone, I absolutely love her wool. Um, it Even though it has organic matter I have to you know pick out just like any wool would but it is soft and silky and um, just amazing to work with very easy to clean and process and it's proving to weave very well as also and it is just it's making a very soft um, cloud like texture to um, the rug. I'm just excited to use it and I'm excited to um, start spinning more with it as well to make um, yarn and craft yarn. So that was the first wool that I used and since this is my very first and experimental rug I decided I was going to use every single kind of wool that I've got. I was going to try it with it being, um, you know, washed and carded and made into robing. And then I was also going to try it with um, some of my little cheesecakes wool. He's my half phallus, black nose, and half baby doll sheep or little lamb, and um, he has a very coarse hair. Their, their wool is for um, carpets and for insulation, things like that. And so, um, but his has been very coarse and, and um, scratchy almost feeling. So I was getting a little discouraged, wondering what am I going to do with it. So my friend Brianna, she is an amazing wool worker. And um, she took some of his wool and carded it. However, she didn't wash it first. She just um, cleaned out all the organic matter and carded it on her drum carter. And it's, I have to say weird to touch it because it is very coated in that lanolin but I wanted to try it because I've seen a lot of people say especially with rugs that they don't wash their wool they just um, pick it and then cart it or do whatever they're going to do so I wanted to try it that way so I've um, you'll see in a little while I'm going to 
be using his wool to do that. And then I also used um, a couple rolls of the 100% ballast that I got down from Hidden Ballas Ranch. It's a few hours away from me. And they have 100% ballast black no sheep down there. Um, and I was able to get the wool that was sheared from their ballast black nose and I brought it up here. It's very different than what Cheesecakes is. Um, it's still a very coarse hair, of course, um, but I did, I did wash it, pick it and wash it, and then I carded it. So I have several different kinds of wool in several different states of processing is what the point is and I'm just doing it to experiment see what is working better than the others and what it does so that I can make different kinds of rugs and um, be able to perfect whatever it is that I'm after for a specific type of rug or woven project. I love that my animals like to come and see what I'm doing and get in the middle of things. Sometimes they get a little rambunctious, especially that little puppy, but um, actually I was quite surprised that my cats weren't in the middle of all of this with all the string and the wool and fun stuff. I really thought they would be right in the middle of everything. So you can see now, when I get up almost to the top of the pegs, I lift the pegs out and then put them down again in front of all the wool that I just took off of them. And I leave that piece of wool sticking out where I finished so I know where I left off and I can start with that peg. But I lift up the pegs, pull the strings up, set it back down all the way across and then I add on more wool and begin to weave again now, as I went I had to card more wool so I can see definitely I need to, the very first thing I buy to continue working on rugs is going to be a drum carter. I can see that that's going to be very necessary in order for me to um, have as much wool as I'll need cleaned and ready to go carded and um, in available for me to use when I need it. You can see the rug beginning to take shape now. And as I touched it, it was so soft and puffy, it just felt like um, I was touching a cloud. So this is where I begin to add in some of the 100% ballast wool. And I just kind of string it together, push it together, and pull it a little bit as I go and start weaving it exactly like I was weaving the other. Picked up where I left off with the chocolate colored and just threw in the white. Now, all the wool, I thought I had um, processed so much wool and was so ready for this project, but rugs take a lot of wool. So it was about here that I started realizing I am going to need a drum carter or I will be forever carding wool and not, 
not get anywhere very quickly. This 100% ballast is wonderful wool. It's very different feeling than what Cheesecakes is. Um, his wool, like I said, is very, very coarse and harsh, scrubby feeling almost. Uh, this ballast wool was very soft, very coarse still, but it has a very soft, silky feel to it as well. Um, so I did a couple rolls of that, and then I um, cleaned that up and brought out the carded, the drum carded wool that my uh, friend carded for me on her drum carter. And I began to use it. Now this was very weird to work with because like I said, it had a very high lanolin content to it. So it was really kind of, uh, I don't know. I'm, I still am undecided if I liked it or not. But as I watched some of the other channels and some of the other people that were making rugs, some of them preferred their outdoor rugs or um, their all of their rugs in general to not be washed and to leave the lanolin in. I'm not sure that that's what I would want for an indoor rug. In fact, I'm positive I wouldn't want that for an indoor rug. However, I was watching one lady's channel that makes sleeping mats for um, homeless people. And uh, she said that she never washes the lanolin out because it will help repel water and moisture and um, it will help their sleeping mats be, um, you know, it'll, it'll absorb more from underneath and repel and um, kind of create that waterproof almost type of a film on it. And she said that works better for these rugs or mats that she makes for these people and um, that they are really loving them and they provide them a really nice sleeping surface comparative to cement or the hard ground or whatever um, their unfortunate situation is. So I thought what an awesome thing for her to do. So as you can see once again you just pick up the peg Pull the string up a bit and set the peg back down in front of the wool. And this is where I realized that I didn't need to um, push that first weaving that I did on the strings down because this will naturally and automatically um, push your mat or your your rug and you're weaving down as you go and you don't have to um, worry about doing that so it makes sense to me now of how it works and I could see the um, the rug kind of start to take shape and I could understand it a lot better at this point. Um, I started getting really excited about it. So I continued to add on more um, roving and um, just kept going. Weaving in and out, get to the ends, wrap it around and come back the other way. And it goes quite quickly. If you have all of your wool ready to go, it really goes quite quickly. I can already see as I was going things that I wanted to learn to perfect and to get better and to, to um, make sure I'm creating the kind of yarn or the kind of roving that I need or want for a desired look 
on specific and different rugs. So I'm going to keep going on this and in this video I don't actually finish the the rug but I do get a little bit further and I'm just so excited but after all the work I had done today on completing the rest of the loom and drilling holes in all the pegs and sanding them uh it was it was a long day but a very enjoyable day and I'm super super excited about this all these many many different little things have added up to be such a major dream come true in my life and I'm so grateful to everyone that has shared or mentored me in some way I'm excited and I'm hopeful that some of you will be able to take something away from this, be inspired somehow. I'd love to see and hear about your projects. This is how it looks on the other side. Watch for my next video when I finish my very first rug. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you have a great day.